Can you imagine what being tormented for five months and not even being able to die would be like? Why would a loving creator torment a group of people for five months and who might this group of people be? Will it be the whole world? Is it possible that they will be his chosen people who have rejected him, that he scattered? And he's tried to call back to him, but they refused him? The fifth trumpet of the apocalypse started to sound on June 1st of this year. At some point in time between this day and February 20th of next year, the angel that began to sound this trumpet will let loose our creator's destroying messengers. He is just being held back until now. These messengers will be given power to hurt but not kill those to whom, whom, who they, whom they are sent to. We read this in Revelations chapter 9, starting verse 3. And there came out of this smoke locusts upon the earth, and to them was given power like the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of Elohim in their foreheads. What is this seal that you are going to need to have to, in your forehead in order to be excluded from this time of torment? Our Creator has shown us that the mark of the beast is the mark of rebellion to his word, the mark of disobedience. And he has shown that his mark is given to those who are obedient to his word and have chosen to hearken to his instructions so that they can become as he is and be programmed in his likeness. We are given one of the characteristics of this mark in Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4 he says, Yahweh said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark or a signature upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all of the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. And I heard him say regarding the others, Go after them through the city and smite. Let not your eye spare, neither have you pity nor have compassion on them. Slay utterly the old and the young, both virgins and women with their families. But do not come near all men who have the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. Begin with the men who are elders that stand before the house of Israel. Here he is also talking about the time when all will be slain at the end. But this warning is a dual reference to the coming time of torment as well. The coming time of affliction is being sent with a purpose. And it will come systematically to accomplish his purpose. This time of torment precedes the time that those who are of the scattered Tribes of Israel who will not turn will be utterly destroyed. But both the mark of Elohim and the mark of the beast apply to the entire time of, of, of affliction until Yeshua returns, even after the 150 days is expired. It is just that the judgment begins with the house of Israel and he is sending his rebuke to Israel to humble a people to return to him. The people who are Given the mark of Elohim are those who are broken over all of the abominations done in their midst. Are you broken that man has not and does not obey their creator? Are you broken that man ignores his commandments and statutes and judgments? Or are you one of them who also ignores his instructions? Are your judgments more righteous than his? Do you decide right from wrong for yourself? It is very important to understand why he says to begin at his sanctuary and why he says to begin with the elders. The elders are those shepherds who have taught lies and not fed the sheep, his sheep the truth. But the sheep are not exempt. They chose to believe the lies in order to not obey their creator. He is saying to begin with the lost sheep of Israel who would not return to him in general, but there will be those whom greater recompense is paid to because they took it upon themselves to be Satan's shepherds. But he is not going to begin by slaying the scattered flock, and for a reason. He is going to first send this time of torment to chastise them and to test them and to plead with the people to return to him. Sadly, most will not receive this correction well, and they will blaspheme him even though it is because of their rebellion that has brought this calamity upon them. I had a friend that was struck by a scorpion several years back. This man is a pretty tough guy, yet the sting was so painful that it made him screech in pain. He said that the pain was unbearable. He would have liked to have died to escape it. Yahweh has shown us in his word that the scattered nations of Israel are primarily those who have chosen to remain in captivity to the false religion of Christianity and have trampled his son's blood underfoot. 
They are those who had his covenant available to them firsthand, but perverted it. This is the third of the world that bears his name falsely. As for the rest of the world who are not descendants of Israel, the calamity that will be sent to them will be, will be able to destroy them. They will be able to die if they will not agree to turn from their ways, just as all of those who are from the descendants of Israel will also be destroyed following the five months if they will not turn back. So these messengers that are sent with the torment are being sent to the descendants of Israel. No, only, but other, other calamity will certainly fall upon the others. And he's going to wipe out all that opposes him on the end when, at the end when Yeshua returns. Israel receiving this correction will serve as a warning to these other nations to, to turn from their ways. This is because Israel was supposed to take the truth to them and to live it for an example to them, but they did not. They brought perversions to the world. So now Israel is going to be an example to them of what, of, of what not obeying him results in. Revelation 3.19, Yeshua says, As many as I have affection for, I admonish and discipline. Be zealous, therefore, and turn from your ways. Turn before this time of correc correction is upon you. That's what he's crying out for you to do now. Those in the scattered nations of Israel that have not returned to their maker, have not let his word rebuke them and discipline them as it was sent to do. And now he will send his messengers to plead with them on a different level. It does not sound like it will be much fun. He sent Israel back into the wilderness for 40 years to be a warning to us, just as he sent his other warnings. But most have not hearkened to his warnings, and most have not feared his wrath. The time of his warnings is about up. This today is going out to you as a warning. Continuing, continuing on in Revelation chapter 9, we read the next verse in verse 5. And to them it was given to them that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. In those days men will seek death, but will not find it. And they will desire to die, but death will flee from them. As I have been speaking in these videos, it fits into the time sequence that, this, that has been given, that this five months could begin in just over a week on November 9th. It fits because exactly five months away from this date is the anniversary of the first exodus. It would make sense that this five months would end and then he would deliver those who will not continue to blaspheme his seven spirits on the anniversary of the exodus. If you are too stiff-necked to repent before this five month period begins, whenever the date is that it will begin, then I suggest that you spend the five months in humility crying for your abominations and not crying over the pain. I say this because in the days that follow the five months, you will be destroyed if you have not turned to your creator to be delivered. He told Job during his time of suffering, he says, he says in Job 38, he says, gird up now your loins like a warrior and desire to know, he says. Most of you have not desired to know his truth. He said that his people will be destroyed because they have rejected knowledge. During these five months, will you continue to reject his knowledge? You have been. It has been witnessed against you that you will not receive his knowledge without the correction. Is this an unfair thing that he is sending? He is trying to give you his love for eternity? Why not receive it? Stop rejecting his love and return to him. Has he not pleaded with you to turn to him all along with all of his blessings and his warnings? But you have ignored his warnings just as you have ignored the rest of his word. You sure did not ignore his blessings though. You sure wanted to cover yourselves with his son's blood without meeting the conditions to have it applied to your transgressions. You continued to live in your transgressions while trampling his son's blood underfoot in doing so. Instead of obeying him, you chose to believe in lies so that you could justify not obeying him. You have put your hope in these lies while outright rejecting his righteousness. And you have rejected his love in doing so. You spoke about that yesterday, how he sent his son to show, to die, to show us his love, what he was willing to go, the depths that he was willing to go to on our behalf if we would turn, return to him. He could just wipe you off the face of the earth, earth as he did in the flood, but he wants to continue to build his family. So he is pleading with the people to return to him. 
It is not a coincidence that the waters increased for 150 days during the flood, during the days of Noah. So it will be during this 150 day period. The torment will be increased upon those who will not turn to his truth for deliverance. My friend that I spoke of called the hospital when he was struck by the scorpion and when he told them that it had only happened a short time before, the lady told him to buckle up because it was going to get much worse before it got better. Why don't you want to become as he is anyway? Why is, he, why is it taking this? Why is it taking his wrath just to get you to listen to him? What do you think the world will be like when all will seek to love as he loves? Is it going to be a bad thing? Why wouldn't you want to be there to be a part of it? What will it be like when his will is finally done on the earth as it is in heaven? What an awesome time to look forward to. It will be about relationships and love and it will be awesome. People will not seek what they can get by with. They will seek his righteousness or they will be purged out. What do you think he owes you for, for giving you life? Does he owe you eternal life? He put us here to overcome and to be made in his likeness. Why don't you want his, this purpose for you? Why do you need this five months of torment to prick your ears? When it comes, will you blaspheme him for punishing you even though it was it is because you have rebelled against him that he sent it? You have not stood with truth. You have rejected it and you have stood with lies. Should he not punish you in an effort to chastise you for your rebellion so that you might get down off of your blasphemous high horse that you prayed around on? He certainly will take no pleasure in punishing you, but is there another, any other way? As I said, he could just destroy you, but then how would he continue to build his family? So he's sending this time to plead with you. I've been crying out in the wilderness for months now, and so few have hearkened to his word that he has sent out. So few have joined in with his cry. Instead, Satan's sermons continue to be heard loud and clear. I get so sick when I hear Satan's sermons cry out to people just to give their hearts to some make-believe Messiah that they, that they call Jesus. It usually goes something like this. Are you saved? Have you given your heart to Jesus? Come kneel down with me and send me a, or send me a personal email and say that you want to be saved and I'll pray with you and you'll be, you'll be saved. Where is this found in the instruction manual? It is not, and it is a blaspheme to why Yeshua shed his blood at Golgotha that day. He shed his blood on your behalf if you would enter into a contract with his Father to turn from your ways to his ways. I am telling you that our Creator is getting ready to destroy these false houses of worship and their altars therein. If you find yourself a recipient of the five months of torment in the near future, I suggest that you do not seek these blasphemous perversions of his truth. You will need to turn to the truth that will set you free and his word is truth. And believe me, his word does not include the teachings of Saul of Tarsus or, or, or his followers Luke or Mark. These false shepherds have nothing that will deliver you. Stay away from them. I would stay out of man's church buildings altogether because they are all coming down. Seek your Creator's mercy and shame for your abominations and cry out that you will that you will turn to his truth. If I were you, I would be crying out to him that you will stand with him when he removes the torment. And if you if I were you, I would mean it with all of my being when, when you make this promise to him. If you have chosen to walk side by side with evil and not purge it out, it is for this reason that you will be punished. You should be full of shame for your actions, but you have not been. You refuse to see that you are blind and naked. Anoint your eyes, he says. And that, we've talked about that in a lot of these videos, but start fearing going against him. It's the beginning of being able to see. Cry out for his seven spirits and, and, and turning to him in obedience so you can receive them. Most of you have had no shame for your abominations and you call good evil and evil good. The torment is being sent to show you the shame of your nakedness. Repent and cover your heads while, while you still can, or gird up your loins like a warrior and receive his wrath and shame and brokenness. You have not chosen to let him circumcise the foreskins of your hearts through his word as he offered to you to do. So now he will try and circumcise your hearts with five months of torments pricking your ears to hear his word. Repent or gird up your loins because dying is not going to be an option for these days. 